Post-traumatic stress disorder is a debilitating condition which affects many Australian veterans. It can lead to chronic anxiety, depression and too often suicide. For the most part, treatments have been limited to medication and counselling. and Sufferers often need constant supervision to stop them from coming to harm. But now veterans suffering PTSD have another treatment option. And this furry four-legged version is having some surprising results. Greg Muller reports. Here. Good boy. It's just a horrible thing, you know, because you're reliving past events and you isolate yourself. It just becomes utter despair. Right about turn. After six years in the army, Michelle Humphreys was diagnosed with PTSD in 2000. For the best part of 15 years, she's been too unwell to venture outside. You have the mood swings, you have the highs, lows, and, you know, to the point where um, it's all too hard. And you just don't want to continue. Now yeah, I got my life back. Because of one fluffy little white dog. Oh, there's so many people here, you got to listen to me. Oh, I was on painkillers, I was on uh, antidepressants, I'm taking sleeping pills to sleep. Because you'd have the flashbacks and the nightmares that wake you up during the night. Stay. When a doctor suggested the heavy analgesia ketamine for pain management, Michelle decided she'd had enough. She got all her medications and flushed them down the toilet and got a dog. He's the best medicine I could ever get. Give me a choice between pills and him, I'll take him any day of the week. One, two... Steve Austin is a professional dog trainer. Steve started training dogs for PTSD after being approached by the volunteer organisation Young Diggers. With people, if you're having a bad day, they go, see you later. <laughs> you know? But with the dog, he goes, well, you know, I'm still hanging around you. The dogs are rescued from animal shelters around Australia and can take up to two years to train. More than 200 dogs have been placed since the program began three years ago. There is a big demand, and I think with um, uh, the pullout of Afghanistan now coming and the Middle East, I think there's going to be a, a much higher demand in the future too. The dogs are trained to respond to emotions. Josh New was diagnosed with PTSD in 2011. He spent 10 years in the military, including three deployments in Afghanistan. Soon after returning home, he realised things weren't right. I knew all along that I was struggling. Um, when I realised that I needed to actually do something and ask for help was when my wife turned around and said, you need to get help, otherwise I don't feel safe to live here anymore. I became suicidal and um, I got to a very low point and that's when I ended up in um, Ward 17 down in uh, Melbourne. Come back here. After numerous stints in hospital, Josh thought he would try an assistance dog. So he got Lucky. I noticed that Lucky and I bonded only on the second day and I had a bit of a trigger. There was a young girl screaming there and I got a bit emotional. I was crying and he, um, he went from a sleeping state and jumped up and laid on my chest and just lay there until I'd stopped crying just to make sure I was alright. So I knew I was, oh, that we had a bond there. Josh showed our cameras how Lucky responds when he starts showing signs of being upset. You said before that before you took care of Lucky that you, know, you became suicidal at times. I can't see how that would be possible with a dog next to you who's so in tune. If I was to do anything like that now, I'd have him looking at me. So there's no way I could do it. Yeah. I'm okay. Good boy. Got me. Got me. Got me. Got me. As well as being a constant companion for Josh, Lucky has also given relief to the family. You know, there's still bad days, and, and Josh might spend the day in bed, but Lucky's always by his side. Um, Lucky's allowed me to um, leave the house and know that there's a pair of eyes on him at all times. 
Dr Damon Ashworth treats people with PTSD and says the first phase of treatment is about re-establishing safety. A dog is often living in the moment and that grounding is really important if you're having flashbacks, if you're having nightmares. Because in those moments the brain will go back to the past and what we need to do is to bring it back to the present and say right now I am safe. But Dr Ashworth warns that it's not a cure for everyone and cannot always replace drugs. Medication is something that's very important for bringing down arousal, uh, for bringing down stress and anxiety, especially after a tr exposure to a traumatic event. So if they were to seize that without talking to their doctor about that first, uh, then I'd be quite concerned. One year on and Bobby has not only given Michelle the confidence to venture out, she's even learning to fly. Could you imagine you getting off pilot's licence before you got Bobby? Not a chance. There was no in the world I could do it. I wouldn't get anywhere near the, the controls because of the medicine that, that I was on, the, you know. Um, that was the, for a start, but also I couldn't think clearly. I couldn't, I couldn't even hold a proper conversation back then. I did get some good things out of the military, but there's, I also got the demons. And um, as I said, uh, uh, governments send the veterans out to fight a war, but then they come back and they're still fighting their own war. And um, you can't fight alone, you need help. 